Hello and welcome inside the WOSN studios for our first press row of 2016. Good to have the gang back together. We made it through another year and we're going to talk a lot of local sports that we missed in the couple weeks. We've got Todd Walker, Aaron Matthews, Mark Kuntz, I'm Matt Finkel. And guys, let's begin on the high school hardwood for the boys because the NWC before we left was very strong top to bottom and I still think it is that way. Lincoln View's unbeaten, and they're unbeaten in the league. Remember that big win over Spencerville early on. Are they the team to beat in the Northwest Conference? It's pretty clear they are. I mean, they're still undefeated. I think the biggest question is what happened to Spencerville. Uh, that's really what has a people puzzled, I think, right now. But Lincoln View clearly has established themselves as the team to beat, and now we'll see how they play in that role you know, coming down the second half of the season. It's a lot harder, at least uh, the saying goes, to be the hunted rather than the hunter. So see how the Lancers do but really I'm puzzled by what's going on with Spencerville they've got some things to get corrected to get back on track here after the new year you look at uh, Lincoln View and I think right now they are now they still have a matchup coming up guys in a couple of weeks they've got Crestview on the docket Crestview without Cody Mefford who might be their second third best player he's out for the month of January it appears uh, due to a concussion so that's a huge blow to the Knights and what they could possibly do in this matchup with Lincoln View, but that's two weeks down the road. But as of right now, I would say Lincoln View, yes, is the team to beat, and uh, I would say they are the surprise team of the 2015-16 uh, basketball campaign to date. Yeah, exactly what I was going to say. I don't think anybody maybe outside of Lincoln View High School itself saw the Lancers coming out of this way. You know, when we talked to Lincoln View beginning of the season, the coach had a pretty good idea that he thought this team could be a, a surprise team that really had come together. He had good confidence in his boys, and seeing what they've done so far, I, I think you have to agree with what Coach Hammond saw and what they have done. You know, they, they do have a couple games left to go. Obviously, they are home for Crestview. They are home for Ada t at the end of the season. They have to travel to Paulding. Uh, I think they've got Bluffton at Lincoln View. So I, I think the path is there for the Lancers. But as Todd touched on, it, it is much more difficult when you're the hunter than the hunted. So we'll see how the Lancers can deal with all this. But going back to the Spencerville, they've kind of gone south ever since that loss to Lincoln View. Yeah, they lost to Kaleida over the break. and. Yeah, they got I, dismantled I, by Collider. Collider really took them apart, and Collider didn't win any other game over the break. They lost three other games. Right. So, uh, I don't know. I mean, Spencerville, maybe they're having a bit of a, a hangover from, you know, the football season. The, the couple of those guys were hurt. Uh, they're now back. But it's just, it's obviously, it's not fitting together. It's not coming together. But the good news is a lot of the season still yet to play for Spencerville to get it figured out. They've got eight on Friday night. I think a very winnable game for Spencerville. But I'm, I'm curious to see how they come out because – after that Kaleida game, they have not played. So they were going from a Tuesday to the following Friday, you know, a week and a half off. And you can only do so much in the gym with your guys besides run their tails off, you know. And it's not like they're going to school right. for a lot of that right. as well because yeah. you're in the holiday break. Kids get completely out of, the, of their routine. So not only are you not playing for a week and a half, you get kids sitting around, traveling, doing whatever they're doing over the break. That Xbox gets them out. 9,000. <laughs> 9,000. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, that could just come out. I must have missed that one. Well, uh, PlayStation 26. <laughs> talking to Mark Shine. 2600? ColecoVision? <laughs> Pong? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> talking to Mark Shine over the break, it's interesting, you know, former coach, he's, you know, it's tough to keep the guys motivated when mm -hmm. there's no schedule, there's no rhythm, which is why he, he tried to explain some of the scores that we saw maybe that we would consider surprising. But back to Lincoln View for a second, I just think they have a really balanced scoring attack with a lot of experienced seniors on this team and then also some good young guys coming up as well. There'll be a team to watch. That Crestview matchup, Crestview just one loss overall and that came over the break to Miller City. Definitely looking at that matchup in a couple of weeks to possibly decide the NWC. So all this talk about break now, which team do you think had the best holiday break overall? Well, Lincoln View stayed undefeated. They're leading the NWC. They also would be leading the PCL as well. I think they got four wins over the yeah. Falcon <laughs> County League. So Lincoln View had a good break. Lima Senior had a good break. I mean, you know, any of these teams that stayed undefeated certainly had good breaks. But for Lima Senior, the break was, it was nice for them because it was able to get them back into a rhythm because they didn't start off right away. They're now in a rhythm. They've got a lot of games to play in January and the first couple weeks of February. They're relatively healthy. They're in top form and you know they had a special night at Lima Senior the, that sat Saturday after Christmas with William White and the, the golden football from the NFL and they blew a light out so that's two times this year now Lima Senior's cracked 100 points. I, I was thinking Lima Senior at this question but I went with LCC and here's why. You're the Minister the, of Propaganda. Well number one I am the Minister yeah. of Propaganda. Number two the birds actually got tested a little bit on the break. It was their first game during the break against Liberty Benton a game that they won by 14. Their average margin of victory during 
the holiday break was 32 and a half points per game. But the Liberty Benton game, they were only up two with two minutes to play in the third quarter before they finally turned it on. But the, the win over Bell Fountain, the win over Van Wert, the win over Delphi St. John's. Th these three scores at halftime, guys, 40 to 19, 41 to 19, 40 to 18. Talk about parity. That's pretty much it right there. And Mark, you got to see the birds in person in depth for the first time this year with the St. John's game. I know you were extremely impressed with what they did because they came out and just from the word go had it on. It was a 16-0 run, right? To yeah, start the I game. mean, defensively, LCC really dictated what they were going to do. Did a fantastic job of forcing the turnovers. And we talked about it during the, the broadcast Saturday or Sunday night with Garrett Mansfield. They brought in Thomas Williams, put him down in the post on uh, the, the Kiefer for the, the big guy for St. John's. That allowed Dantes Walton to come out, play out on the wing. And Dantes did a fantastic job of forcing turnovers, disrupting things. And, and that led to a lot of transition buckets. And when you got Walton and Cobbs both firing on all cylinders, this LCC team isn't necessarily deep, but their starting five is pretty good. Yeah, I think uh, LCC, you could make that argument. I like Lima Sr. had a good break as well. Uh, really uh, just continued to roll. And you know, I don't certainly want to jinx anything, but I'm looking at Lima Sr. schedule, and uh, I'm not going to look past St. John's, of course, and the LCC game will be tough. But, I mean, it's not far-fetched to think they're going to run the table. I mean, the way they're playing right now, they are obliterating people, and it's not even close. They're remotely close. So... We'll see how it goes, but the Spartans are on a serious roll right now. They got Whitmer this week, and we'll see if Whitmer's got anything for them. But uh, the way the Lima Senior Spartans are playing, I, I don't know that anybody's going to beat them in this regular season. Whitmer's off to a surprising start, too, at 7-3. and three. And the LCC Lima Senior game is at the end of this month, correct? 26th. And we had a lot of hype for last year's game for good reason, but if they both come in on beaten, that'll oh elevate it a bit, right? And the circus is in town, friends. <laughs> Scheduled for Monsignor Her Gymnasium. Yep. Yes. All right. And in a team I just wanted to point out who I think had a good break is Shawnee because they've been yep. surprising yeah. some in the WBO. I believe they've won That's five in a row. Jaden O'Neill, they're getting scoring besides O'Neill too, which, which is nice to see. And I think they could make a run at the league. The thing with uh, Shawnee that impressed me, go back to before the end of the school year, that last Friday when they played St. Mary's, the game on WOSN that I had with Dave Fralick. They went to a five-guard set where the tallest player on the floor was Jaden O'Neill at 6'2". And they basically, Mark Triplett said, all right, you guys use your speed and quickness and just dictate this game. They outscored St. Mary's from the middle of the second quarter on 65-26 to after St. Mary's had gone on a 10-0 run to start the quarter. Shawnee answered with a 16-0 run to end the half. I'm very impressed with what Shawnee's done this year. Yeah, they'll definitely be a team to watch. Now, going back to Lima Senior and LCC for a moment, because I think that's where the, we've seen the majority of our dunking this high school basketball season, <laughs> which spurns the question, the best high school dunker you've seen in person. Doesn't have to be the best dunk, but their overall catalog of throwdowns. No, I, I mean, I go back to, to Greg Simpson. Uh, his, and the thing about Greg's dunks were that, you know, a lot of times they're, they're cheap dunks or, you know, you got a, a breakaway, but a lot of times he would dunk in traffic in the regular flow of a game and it would still be fancy. You know, the thing where he tossed it under his arm was when he was on a breakaway. But uh, Simpson, to me, it was also so exciting because, you know, some guys you just look at them when they come in the gym, you're like, well, I bet that guy can really dunk. You know, Greg was not the most impressive physical specimen, but then once you saw him play and uh, the dunks were just exciting. Uh, this, you know, going back to Lima Senior right now, this is starting to have the feel of the Greg Simpson days for me as far as the Spartans are the show. They are a show that you don't ever want to miss, and that's how it was with Greg Simpson. Uh, he, he's got my vote in this category, although there are certainly plenty of other worthy candidates. I, w I would have said Greg had I seen him play in high school. Never got to see Greg play in high school. I wasn't living here at the time, but I am going to go back to high school a little bit. Bonzi Wells at Muncie Central, <laughs> uh, yeah. Indiana. He dunked on my Logansport Berries, but we got him on the scoreboard where it mattered most. The guy could put on a show, uh, not just at Muncie Central, but also at Ball State and later in the NBA. But um, I would say modern era high school, Bill Walker from North College Hill. Todd, oh. you'll remember the circus that North College <laughs> Hill was down in Columbus with well, O.J. Bill Walker, Mailer. He's one of those guys I'm talking about. Right. When he walks on the floor, you're like, you know this guy's going to dunk all day long. He is a monster. I still have on I still have it on my uh, external hard drive the dunk that he had where he had a breakout windmill in Columbus. I, somebody had taken video when they, just in the inception of video being able to do video on your phones. Um, I still have the video yeah. of that on my uh, on my computer. Just watching him in high school, but also LeBron, what he did at St. V. 
Um, just, you know, the size and what he brought to the table, the 6'7", 6'8", 250, 260, ran like a deer and could throw down on anybody. Um, it, you know, the interesting thing about LeBron, you bring him up and, and obviously he could dunk, but he actually created more dunks for Romeo Travis, yes. who actually got a lot more dunks than LeBron did in high school. You mentioned, and you mentioned Lima Sr. for a minute. I've got an honorable mention for you, 1999, part of throwback 44 yeah. against Elida. Dion Rose. Dion Rose. Dion Rose yeah. could hammer. I remember against Fairfield in the old gym on Pierce Street, he backs this guy down on the low block, drop step, and just booms him, gets the call for the foul, and the kid's probably still picking splinters out of his head <laughs> back in. That was as impressive of a back down dunk, non Shaquille O'Neal type that I ever saw. Well, this conversation proves to me is that the three of us were old. Because my dunker is going back past Greg Simpson to Jimmy Jackson, Toledo Maycumber. He, in fact, won a uh, Beach Jam slam dunk, national slam dunk contest in high school down in South Carolina his senior year. But he was one of those guys, 6'6", six, six, he could do it all, and he was a very powerful dunker. Didn't dunk so much in college with the pros because that just wasn't quite what his game was. But in high school, he literally was a man among boys. And, you know, we'll, we'll go back to our childhood and remember those days fondly. So that's, that's why I go with Jimmy. Is that why he's in the open on throwback 44 as That well? was actually his 2000th high school point. Came against Lima came Senior. Came against Senior High, yeah. yeah. Just a little more no, recently. What I watched over the holidays. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little more recently, Dantes Walton's first couple dunks in that Delphi St. John's game were pretty spectacular. He elevated. I was, I, you know, I was just like, whoa. Googly. By the way, they've made Boom Shakalaka t-shirts that they're selling in the LCC bookstore oh, with, cool. as a result of that. <laughs> Speaking of old school video games. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, let's move on now to the NFL. And the Bengals are in the playoffs, but they will host a wild card game against the Steelers. And I believe the quote was, we've got to exercise some demons. That's what Marvin Lewis said when he realized this was a possible matchup. Will they get the playoff win? Not only it's a playoff win, it's against the Steelers. Yeah, it's, right. it's, it's a big At game. Night. At night. Things yeah. they have not done very well. Yeah. And oh yeah, it's Dalton's a backup out. quarterback. Yeah. I, I think Boomer Esiason is the last Bengal quarterback to win his first playoff start as a Bengal. Yeah. So that's, that's what A.J. McCarron is going up against, plus a Steeler team that is as Steelers are want to do are playing pretty well as the season progressed. So it's not the matchup the Bengals want, but it's the matchup they have. I don't know if they'll be able to get it done. You know, everything's working against them. As you just said, they, they never win in the playoffs. They never win in prime time. They can't beat the Steelers. Uh, they got a backup quarterback. So my prediction is they'll win it, The funny thing is, do they really want to win? Cause if you win, now, let's say Dalton is healthy the next week, which he should be. What do you do? Do you go back to your long-term franchise quarterback, or do you stick with the kid if you beat Pittsburgh? I guess that'll depend on how it plays out. But uh, 15 years ago, kind of worked out well for the Patriots going with the backup true. quarterback. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. But I got a feeling they're going to beat the Steelers. I, I think that the Bengals can beat the Steelers, and they want to exercise those demons, as you mentioned, with what Coach Lewis said. Because I'll be honest with you guys, they don't win this one. When will they win a playoff game? I mean, I'm not saying they're going to turn it around and be the Chicago Cubs of the NFL and, you know, have X amount of year, over 100 years in between, you know, playoff appearance or anything like that. They're not the Cleveland Browns by any stretch of the imagination. Right. But they, I think this is the chance for them to win one. Well, it, you know, they, they need to get over the hump because this is a team with a lot of talent. And even if the that's the end of the road this year. If they only win one, at least they can finally get yeah. that yep. off their backs. Now, it'll still be on Andy Dalton's back, right. but they could really improve the outlook moving forward just by winning this one game. So, and I'm, I'm not so sold on the Steelers. I know they were great down the stretch and all that, but week 16, the next to last game, they laid a huge egg. I don't think the Steelers are some unbeatable juggernaut. I'll take the Bengals. All right, quickly running out of time. Let's close with the Browns. Got to talk about them. They're not in the playoffs, of course, but the question for me is, from me to you is, will they ever get it right? This deep Podesta move from baseball to football, that's the news for the Browns the last couple of days. Is that a good one? Will they get it right? Well, I don't, get it more wrong. I don't know if I'll live to see it, but eventually they will. You got to remember, kids, again, for you youngsters out there, at the beginning of my life, <laughs> the Steelers – were never heard from. They were the laughing stock of the NFL. Now I know I'm old, but to put it in context, they were the laughing stock of the NFL. In the Super Bowl era, they've been among the best franchises in the entire league. It can turn around. Now, I don't know when it will, but sometime, someday, 
The Browns will get it right, and yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. Well, the Steelers have had three head coaches in 50 years. The Browns have had three head coaches in 50 days, it seems like. Yeah, well, that's about right. You got your wig to go to Vegas? Oh, Billy, Billy, <laughs> Billy, Billy. That's all, right. all I'm going to say. That, that's how the first press row of 2016 will come to a close. Thank you very much for joining us. Enjoy your games this weekend. We'll see you next week.